Hi, hello there and uh, welcome back to my new video. So in this video I am going to show you how to create a uh, animated uh, shimmer effect using uh, Jetpack Compose. Now before we start with the code uh, I am going to show you how this uh, shimmer effect uh, will look like. Okay, uh, so this is how our uh, shimmer effect uh, will look like. So we are going to see this uh, beautiful animation. Uh, I have designed this uh, shimmer effect uh, for a light theme, but we can also use that with a dark theme. So let me just uh, show you. Of course, uh, for the dark theme uh, you will have to apply uh, different colors, but you can see that uh, everything will uh, work the same basically with uh, just uh, different colors. Anyhow, let's get back with uh, our light theme. And uh, we are going to start uh, implementing that, okay? So let's uh, go to our Android Studio project. And uh, we are going to create here a new Kotlin file in which uh, we are going to make that uh, shimmer effect. So let's name this file a shimmer or a animated uh, shimmer. Now let's create here a new composable function. And this function should be named uh, animated uh, shimmer. So uh, from that uh, application preview you have seen our uh, shimmer effect. So basically uh, we are going to animate uh, our uh, gradient color or its uh, x and y position. So you will see about that now. Let's get back here and now I'm going to create a new variable here named uh, shimmer colors. And then this will be just a list of uh, three different colors, okay? So those uh, shimmer colors uh, will be used on our gradient uh, color or on our brush and then that color or its uh, x and y positions uh, will be animated. So let's now start by adding the first color. So I'm going to use uh, already existing color from our uh, color class. So Android X Compose UI Graphics. I'm going to choose here a light gray color and uh, I'm going to change its uh, alpha state or alpha value. So for the alpha value here for this uh, first color I'm going to specify 0 0.8 or 6 uh, F. Then uh, down below I'm going to copy that uh, color once again. Uh, this time this uh, color uh, in the middle will be uh, with an alpha value of 0 0.2 F. And the third one will also have a 0 0.6 like the first one, okay? So the lightest uh, color in our gradient should be this one in the middle, okay? And that's why I have specified only 0.2F, which is basically a 20% opacity of this uh, light gray color. Now below this uh, list of uh, colors, uh, I'm going to create one uh, variable named uh, transition, and then I'm going to use uh, one composable uh, function named uh, remember infinite uh, transition. So basically uh, with this uh, function we are going to be able to animate uh, our shimmer as long as we want. And uh, below that uh, let's create here another uh, variable named uh, translate animation. And here we're going to call this uh, infinite uh, transition and then we are going to animate a float value. So initial value uh, should be zero and we are going to animate that to a target value of uh, 1000 uh, for example. Now for the animation spec uh, we need to specify infinite uh, repeatable because this animation will actually uh, animate uh, infinite times. So uh, let's specify here few parameters. So the first one is the actual animation. For that uh, I can choose a twin animation. Duration of this animation can be uh, maybe one second and uh, easing for this animation maybe can be a uh, fast out, uh, slow in. Of course you can choose your own uh, easing for this animation, this is just one example. And finally down below we are going to create uh, one new variable named the brush and we are going to create a linear brush. So uh, brush dot uh, a linear gradient and then here we need to specify those uh, three colors which we have already made. So let's add here uh, those uh, colors. So shimmer colors as a first parameter. Then as a second parameter uh, we need to pass the starting position of this uh, linear gradient. So a starting position uh, should be specified inside this uh, offset and we can specify zero so that will be a starting position and the uh, ending position should be grabbed uh, from that uh, translate uh, anim variable. So Let's use an offset. For the x we can specify a translation or translate the anim dot uh, value. And for the y we can also specify that uh, same variable. And uh, with this uh, we will be able to animate uh, our gradient or a linear gradient from a 0 to a 1000. Which is basically the end of our uh, shimmer effect in this case. Or this uh, linear gradient. 
and that uh, brush will be passed to our new uh, shimmer grid item uh, which we are going to create so now we need to create this uh, circle and uh, those two lines basically okay and then this uh, brush color should be passed to each one of those elements which we will make now okay so uh, after that uh, let's create a new composable function named the shimmer a grid item and this function will take uh, only one parameter and that is a brush which of course we are going to pass uh, right here so let's call here a shimmer grid item and let's pass that brush so we have basically completed the, everything we need for this uh, animated shimmer composable function and now we are going to focus on this uh, shimmer grid item so in this case of course uh, i have created uh, only one circle and those uh, two lines but uh, depending on the data which uh, you want to uh, show to your users then you might need to create a different kind of uh, layout here for this uh, shimmer effect okay so this is just uh, one example and uh, let's start uh, creating this uh, shimmer grid item so all those uh, three uh, items here or uh, components uh, should be uh, located inside a uh, one row so let's add here row composable function and the row will take uh, only one parameter and that is a modifier so like that then i'm going to call a fill max uh, width so that this uh, shimmer grid item uh, could take the whole width of the parent and also I'm going to specify a padding on all sides to uh, 10 dp. So uh, this uh, padding value will basically be applied uh, on uh, each and every side of this uh, grid uh, shimmer grid item. And uh, now inside this uh, row I'm going to add uh, one by one item. So uh, for those uh, items I'm going to use a spacer uh, composable function uh, which is a component that represents an empty space layout whose uh, size can be defined using a uh, width, height and modifier size as well. Now let's call this uh, a composable function and of course uh, we are going to add here just uh, one modifier in which we are going to pass that uh, brush gradient. So modifier dot uh, size and in this case the size of this uh, first uh, spacer which will represent a circle uh, will be 80 dp. So that's the first uh, modifier. Uh, next uh, I'm going to add here uh, two more modifiers. So the second modifier uh, will be a clip. And here is the place where we actually specify the shape of this uh, spacer. In this case, I'm going to add here a circle shape because this uh, spacer will represent a circle. You have already seen that in our application. And the last parameter here is a background. And uh, here I'm going to specify a brush. So a brush, a gradient, uh, which we have passed uh, through our uh, shimmer grid item function. So uh, with this, uh, we have basically created our first uh, circle here or our first component. And now we need to create uh, those two as well. So you can see here that this uh, circle is uh, separated by maybe a uh, 5 or 10 uh, dp uh, value with those uh, two other components. So below this uh, spacer, I'm going to add uh, one more spacer with uh, just uh, one modifier. So Android X Compose UI and uh, we're going to add here a width of uh, 10 dp. So this uh, second spacer will just represent a uh, blank space without uh, any background color whatsoever. So below that uh, we need to add the one column now and that uh, column should have a vertical uh, arrangement of uh, arrangement uh, center in this case, okay? So you can see that uh, inside our uh, application here uh, we have one row, inside that row we have a circle and then we need to add a column in which we are going to pass uh, those two other uh, components or lines. So now inside this uh, column let's create uh, two more spacers. So now let's create first a spacer. Uh, we are going to have a modifier of course. Uh, the first uh, modifier will be a height. And the height of this uh, line should be maybe 12 or sorry 20 dp. Then uh, this uh, spacer should take a width of maybe a 0 0.7 uh, fraction. And the last parameter which we need to add here is uh, background. So we need to pass our brush here as well. And now let me create uh, one more uh, spacer down below. So let's just uh, copy this previous spacer and we can change this uh, fraction to be uh, 0.9 maybe. Uh, also I'm going to add uh, one more spacer between uh, those two lines. So we can actually have some space between them like that. And this uh, spacer should have only 5 dp for now. So uh, I think that now we have uh, everything ready to uh, show this uh, animated shimmer effect uh, we can also create here for example one preview function so we can preview uh, our uh, shimmer uh, grid item so let's add here uh, shimmer uh, grid item preview and let's call our shimmer uh, grid item so we need to pass here one brush and uh, for that let me just uh, copy this code uh, from above so let's just specify this uh, list for the colors of our gradient uh, or linear gradient so let's add here a brush dot linear gradient and let's uh, pass that list 
Now let me open this uh, preview so we can actually see how this uh, grid item uh, will uh, show up in our preview here. Okay, so we need to change a few things here. Uh, let me now uh, add here uh, one uh, parameter named the show background. So we can actually see a white background behind our shimmer effect here, okay? So uh, there is of course a few more things which we need to change here. Uh, now I'm going to also add the clip uh, here uh, to our uh, lines. So let's add here a rounded uh, corner shape. And for the size, we can type just uh, maybe 10 dp. I'm going to add this uh, same modifier down below to our uh, second uh, spacer. We can now load uh, and refresh our preview again. So now those two lines uh, will have a slightly uh, corner radius. Okay, so there you go. Okay, so uh, inside this uh, second spacer, which is uh, located in our column, uh, instead of the width, we need to add a padding. So we can add this uh, 5 dp on uh, each and every side. Okay, now let's uh, build and refresh here. And now, in order to center uh, those uh, items uh, in this column, uh, I'm going to add uh, one more uh, attribute uh, or parameter on our row uh, composable. So let's add here a vertical alignment. So alignment.center vertically. And let's uh, build and refresh. So now those uh, two lines or those two components uh, on the left, on the right side, uh, will be centered. So there you go, now we can see our preview. And also, if you want, you can add uh, one more preview here, but this time... Uh, we can specify a UI mode, so a UI mode night, yes. Let's import that and let's change here this uh, function name to Shimmer Grid Item Dark Preview. Okay, now let's uh, build and refresh. And uh, there you go, so now we can see those uh, previews. So the last thing uh, which we need to do here, uh, we need to actually call this uh, function from our main activity. So animated uh, shimmer and uh, let's run our app. And uh, there you go. So now we can see our uh, shimmer effect. So now if you want to create uh, more of those uh, shimmer effect uh, grid items, uh, you can just uh, add here one repeat uh, function. So let me add here one uh, column. Then uh, inside that uh, column, I can add the repeat uh, function. And I can repeat this item, for example, for uh, seven times. So inside the block of this repeat function, let's call our animated shimmer function. And then let's run our app once again. So now we can see our uh, animated shimmer on the whole screen. So it looks uh, beautiful and uh, very nice. Uh, now let's uh, go back to our animated shimmer so we can uh, recap once again uh, what we have actually done in this uh, new composable function. So as I already mentioned before, uh, we are going to basically animate that uh, brush or uh, gradient color in our uh, shimmer effect. That's why we have created uh, those three colors for our shimmer. And you can change, of course, the color and their alpha states as well, so it's up to you. Then uh, below that we have created one uh, infinite uh, transition on which uh, we have applied uh, the exact uh, translate uh, position. So initial value will be 0 and the target value will be 1000. And then uh, finally down below when we have created our gradient uh, color or a linear gradient, there we have specified all those colors. It's a starting offset position, which is a zero, and the end uh, offset position, which will actually be animated, okay? So those two values, x and y, will be animated for our linear gradient in this case. So there are many different ways of uh, creating a shimmer effect. So this was just uh, one simple example of using uh, this uh, gradient uh, color for animating this effect. Of course, you don't even have to use a brush to create this uh, shimmer effect. You can create your own uh, shimmer effect using just uh, fade in and fade out animations as well. So that's totally up to you. So uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Comment uh, down below if you want to see more interesting videos about uh, Jetpack Compose in general. Like this video if you find it helpful, of course. And uh, see you next one.